The whole world is governed by laws, the universe, in fact, laws. We call it the law of electricity. We call it the law of gravity. There's mathematical laws, there's physical laws, speed and velocity laws, agricultural laws. There's all kinds of laws. Now that we find ourselves on the spinning planet, you just have to learn what I call the setup. Learn the setup. Life's setup. Now, we didn't set it up, but we're here, so you got to learn it. And we should learn the setup for two basic reasons. Number one, to keep from getting hurt. It's one of the major reasons for learning, so you won't get hurt. See, economically, socially, personally, you can get hurt just not knowing. Ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is poverty. Ignorance is tragedy. You got to know or you're going to get hurt. It's good to know not to walk out the 10 story window. That's excellent information. Now, what if a guy didn't know and he walks out? Now he's dead at the bottom. Somebody says, well, the poor guy didn't know. <laughs> you got to know or you're going to get hurt. Okay. Now, here's a parenthesis. You don't have to like the setup. I don't ask you to like how it is. That's not what's important. But it is important to learn how it is. Okay, so you don't have to like it, but you should learn it. That's what I tell the kids, right? Make sure you get the information. What you think about it, that's up to you. What you're going to do with it, that'll soon be up to you. But make sure you get it. See, there's nothing worse than being stupid. Nothing. I mean, being broke is bad. But being stupid is awful. And what's really bad is being broken stupid, right? <laughs> That's about the end of the world. I mean, there isn't anything much worse than that. Unless you're sick. Sick, broken, stupid. I mean, that is it, right? <laughs> There's nowhere else to go. So make sure you get the information. It's key. You don't have to like it, but learn it. If this big monstrous thing lifts up in the sky, hangs there for a little while, cuts loose, comes crashing down, boom, shakes the ground for five miles. And then this big monstrous thing lifts back up in the sky, hangs there for a little while, cuts loose again, comes crashing down, boom, shakes the ground for five miles. It just keeps doing it, this big monstrous thing, lifting up and then crashing down, boom. Now, you might come along one day and say, that's got to be a stupid arrangement which is okay. You're entitled to your opinion. But the first thing you should learn to do is get out from under it, right? <laughs> That's number one. You might have a great moral argument. You might want to shake your finger at the sky, but do it from over there, right? So you don't get smashed. It's called your basic smart. So number one, learn so you won't get hurt. Whether you like it or not, learn. Now here's the second reason for learning the setup, to benefit. It's called the plus of life. And that's what life is, right? Both minus and plus. The minus is tragedy, heartache, misery, failure, unhappiness. But life is also happiness, prosperity, good feelings. So here's the key. Learn to get on the good side of the way things work. Now, here's two of the basic laws, and we'll take our break. Shof taught me these. They come from the Bible. Now, again, I'm an amateur, okay? When it comes to the Bible, I'm not a pro. So you'll sort of have to take my way of putting it. But here they are. The first one is the law of use. The law of use. And it goes something like this. Whatever you don't use, you lose. Lack of use causes loss. On this planet, maybe not the next one, but on this one. If you tie your arm to your body, leave it there long enough, you'll never use it again. It's over for the arm. Now, it may not be over, but it's over for the arm. The only way to keep the use of this arm is what? Keep using it. If you quit, you lose automatically. They don't bring it up for a vote. 
you lose automatically when you quit. Now, the same thing that goes for your arm goes for your brain, mentality. The same thing goes for all the human virtues. Ambition, unused, declines. Strong feelings, unused, diminish. It doesn't grow, it diminishes. Faith, unused, decreases. It's a law. Vitality, unused, diminishes. Energy, unused, decreases. The guy says, well, I'm going to save up my energy. You can't do that. <laughs> That's like trying to save today, put it on the end of the year. See, you can't do that. They'll come take you away. <laughs> if you don't use today, what? It's lost. The guy says, well, I'll work twice as hard tomorrow to make up for it. See, that's foolish. You could have done that anyway. Today unused is lost. A talent unused is lost. An ability unused is lost. So here's one of the key expressions of the evening. Take a new inventory of yourself. Starting tomorrow, new project. Take a new inventory. And make sure that all of your talent and ability and mentality and ingenuity and vitality and strong feelings Faith, courage, make sure that all you've got is being used. Otherwise, you lose. Now, one of the best illustrations of the law of use is a Bible story called the parable of the talents. The talent story. Interesting story if you haven't read it in a while. Just review it. It's a good story. An ancient story it says there was a master with three servants. He got them together one day. And he said to the three, I've got these talents. And in those ancient days, a talent was a measure of gold. And he said to the three servants, take these talents and see what you can do with them while I'm gone. He said, I'm taking a journey and I'll be gone for a while. When I come back, we'll get together, go over the book, see how you did. He said, here's five of these talents for you. Five. Here's two of them for you. Two. And here's one for you. One. One. The master said, take those talents, see what you can do with them. When I come back, we'll get together, we'll go over it all. The servant said, okay, master takes off. According to the ancient story, the master comes back from his trip. When he gets back, he gets the three servants together. And as he said he would, he asks, how did it go with those talents? You're five, what happened? That servant said, well, I took the five talents you gave me and I put him to work. A little shaky at first, but he said things finally got rolling. And he said, I poured it on. And he said, my talents grew to seven, eight, nine, ten. He said, I doubled my talents from five to ten. Books will show. Master said, one heck of a job. Or something like that. <laughs> he said, I gave you two talents. What happened? That servant said about the same thing happened to me. I put those two talents to work, poured it on. They grew to three and then to four. He said, I doubled my talents from two to four. Books will show. Master said, well done. He said, I gave you one talent. What happened? That servant said, well, I took the talents you gave me and I carefully wrapped it and I dug a hole and buried it and camouflaged it, I suppose, right? so nobody would steal it. And he said, fortunately, nobody got it. And he said, I knew you were going to be here today, so I dug it up. Here it is, safely wrapped. I did not lose it while you were gone. According to the ancient story, the master said, take that talent away from him and give it to the man that's got ten. Now, you might say, well, I don't like that arrangement. The poor guy's only got one talent. He's already got ten. It ought to be more even. Remember, I didn't ask you to like it. But this one I would ask you to learn because it simply means whatever you do not employ, you forfeit. It's a law. So learn well the law of use. Now here's the second one, and we're going to take our break. Second law, 
from the Bible. This one we've heard since we were small, I'm sure. It's called the law of sowing and reaping. In fact, we've probably heard it so often we could quote it. It says, whatever you sow, what? You shall reap. Fairly blunt, hopefully clear. Here's my first suggestion on the law of sowing and reaping. Don't try to beat it. You might as well try sitting on the sun in the morning. Keep it from coming up. You'll have better luck. Whatever you sow, you reap. Now, for a fair share of my life, I'm a bit mixed up on how all this applies, among a lot of things I was mixed up on. I knew I wasn't reaping too good. That I understood. My problem was I was confused about what was causing it. Remember me with the funny list? I thought those are the reasons why it isn't working out well. And then Mr. Schof gave me the clue that helped me figure it all out. He said, Mr. Owen, I have another answer for you. There's another way to quote this law that'll show you where the problem is so you can go to work on it right away. All you need to know is where the problem is, then you can go to work on it. So he quoted me the law another way and I found out what my problem was. Here's the way you quote the law. Whatever you reap is what you've sown. Now I knew what my problem was. Whatever you reap is what you've sown. If you don't like the crop, who do you look up? Answer, whoever planted it. And where do you find who planted your crop? Answer, in the mirror. <laughs> what I finally learned to do come fall was to go to the mirror. That's where you go. And if necessary, you say, a few skinny carrots? I got to be unimpressed. Where were you last spring? Asleep? Didn't you read the books? Did you break your hoe? <clears throat> Let me give you seven key points to the law of sowing and reaping. Let's tick right down through the list of seven, and it'll be break time. Seven points to sowing and reaping. Here's part of the philosophy that really helped me to make some changes in life direction. Number one, the law of sowing and reaping is negative. That's number one, which simply means if you sow bad, you reap bad. Now, this is kind of third grade, but it doesn't hurt to go over the basics. If you plant thistle seeds, you don't get pumpkins. Honest, no use looking for pumpkins. John says, how come no pumpkins? Come on, John. The law's negative. That's how come. Now, here's number two. The law's positive. Which simply means if you sow good, you reap good. If you plant pumpkin seeds, you don't get thistles. Not from pumpkin seeds. Mother Nature won't pull tricks on you over in the corner snicker and push new thistles and you plant pumpkin seeds. She won't do that. You will get pumpkins from pumpkin seeds and the reason is because the law is positive. Now here's number three. I got excited when I found out the full dimension of this. See, you do not reap what you sow, but rather you always reap much more than what you sow. So the third key word is more. You don't get back what you put out. You get back much more than what you put out. And it works both positive and negative. On the negative side, it said, if you sow to the wind, you reap the whirlwind. So you've got to get ready for that or you will be naive. 